This video is sponsored by KiwiCo, seriously fun and enriching science and art projects delivered directly to you. As the father of a three-year-old, I couldn't have been happier than when I discovered KiwiCo. Their monthly boxes are full of hands-on projects and toys that are designed to expose kids to the concepts in STEAM. Their approach to teaching kids skills that allow them to be innovative and creative in order to become problem solvers who will one day change the world is something that I too feel extremely passionate about. I love putting these things together with my son and he's always excited when a new box full of fun projects and toys arrives at our door. Each box contains everything you need, so no last-minute trips to the store for extra supplies and the instructions are both detailed and kid-friendly. We just got the koala crate and put together our very own piece of stained glass art, which was just one of several projects in the crate. This one is specially designed for kids aged 2 to 4, and I don't need to tell you that we ended up with an absolute masterpiece. There's crates for all ages though, from age 0 to 104, so no matter how old the creative innovator in your life is, KiwiCo has something amazing for them. And now is the perfect time to try out KiwiCo for yourself. Infographic show viewers get a special offer of 50% off their first month of any crate by going to kiwico.com slash infographics. Get started with your own super fun project today! Almost a billion people are born every decade, and all those people want a juicy hamburger just as bad as you. Only problem is we're running out of farmland. That's where your favorite lab rat comes in, as we challenge him to teach us how humans in the future may live with an all-bug diet. Alright Info fans, the show is clearly running low on COVID-friendly ideas, and maybe they took inspiration from one of my wilderness survival challenges, but now they've got me on an all-insect diet for 7 days. At least I gotta pick my insects to eat, which let me tell you, doesn't really help much. Here's the thing, I have no idea what kind of insect foods there even are, so I had to do some research online for a sort of daily meal guide. The show turned me on to EdibleInsects.com, which is more than happy to provide you all your delicious insect needs, and I made infographics pay dearly for the challenge with some primo grade crickets, mealworms, and even scorpions, plus a few other surprises. I bet some of you are practically retching already at the idea of an insect diet, but truth is, it's kind of all protein to me. Now, the girlfriend on the other hand, well, let's just say she about flew back home to stay with her parents for the duration. I had to very carefully explain that the insects were already dead. I think all of you know just how well she does with creepy crawlies. So how'd my bug diet go? For breakfast every day I decided that even for me my first meal of the day would have to be a little easy to get down. There's a sort of a sticker shock when you open up a delivery box full of recently dead insects that still look, well, like insects. So I bought some cricket protein powder, which is exactly what it sounds like, the ground up dust of thousands of crickets. There are cricket wives, cricket children, cricket parents, and cricket grandparents. Honestly, cricket protein tastes just as terrible as any other regular protein powder on the market. To make it edible, I mixed it with various fruits into a nice smoothie each morning and threw in some flax seeds because, honestly, I don't know, the girlfriend puts flax seeds in every breakfast item ever and swears by them. But I'll be damned if I know what flax seeds honestly do for you. Chicks love flax seeds though, so into the smoothie they go. At that point, my daily breakfast tasted, well, like a smoothie. Honestly, you could start using cricket protein powder right now and not taste a difference between that and any other protein powder. Smoothies famously leave me feeling rather hungry though, so I was very concerned about lunch, because I just couldn't seriously consider that insects would be enough to leave me satisfied, like a nice juicy burger. I was wrong. Alright, lunchtime was my first real challenge in downing my all-insect diet, because now the food actually looked like, you know, insects. I'm a fan of lettuce wraps of all kinds, so I got myself a nice head of butter lettuce and a box of dead crickets for my first lunch. You can actually buy yourself a pound of crickets for about 40 bucks, which sounds like an outrageous price until you consider the absolute bonkers amount of calories and protein packed into each tiny dead cricket body. 100 grams of crickets contains almost three times the protein of an equal amount of moo cow beef. It also has less saturated fat, though not by a lot to be honest, and way more carbohydrates. Just two tablespoons of these bad boys contain a whopping 90 calories. So everyone touting the insect diet hopefully eats in moderation because these bad boys will get you fat pretty quick. So I roasted my crickets in some butter, salt, and pepper and squeezed lime juice on them and ladled them into my lettuce cups. By this point the girlfriend looked absolutely green in the face and she dry heaved the first time she saw the crickets sizzling in the pan. Because of course nobody goes in and plucks off their tiny little heads or legs and stuff before packaging, you get the whole cricket and these things look like they were killed just yesterday. Like I said, serious sticker shot content. I took a bite of my first lettuce cup and the girlfriend actually rushed out of the room dry heaving when several dead crickets spilled out of my lettuce cup as I sunk my teeth in. You know what? Crickets taste 
earthy? I don't know. I've eaten one or two in the wild before during some of my survival challenges or when doing wilderness survival training, but I never really had enough to get a real taste of them in my mouth. There's a lot of crunching though, which was oddly satisfying, but also served to remind me that I was eating a mouthful of bugs. What was really annoying was the way their tiny little legs get stuck between your teeth and their antennas kind of get left behind when you swallow. You ever have a hair in your mouth? It's a lot like that. And you end up spitting out bug antennas for a half hour after you're done eating. Immediately after my first lunch, I went to try and get a kiss from the girlfriend, but she was having absolutely none of that. I chased her around the house and tried to pin her down, but she slipped away and locked herself in the bathroom. She made it very clear there'd be no kissing this entire week. Other lunches throughout the week included even more crickets, which honestly are kind of limited in the ways you can prepare them. Seems like roasting them is pretty much it. The key is pairing them with something complimentary, not pasta. Believe me, insects do not go well with pasta, but I'd find out about that soon enough. Other lunches included black ants, which you can buy by the boatful. I sizzled them up with some peas and carrots. Honestly, ants just kind of took the place of rice in my meals. The real pièce de résistance, however, came on Friday, my last lunch of the challenge, in which I treated myself to tarantula. Now, ants and crickets are pretty economically priced, but tarantula is basically the filet mignon of the insect world. I ended up billing the show 20 bucks for two tarantulas, which had to be flown in from Thailand directly and cost a whopping $30 in shipping charges. Also, they took two weeks to get here, so I ordered them well in advance of the challenge. Okay, my tarantula lunch ended up being an expensive disaster. Let me explain. First, I don't know if you knew this, but I am not a bug cuisine master chef. I have done some very rudimentary research and just kind of winged it with my preparation of most of the meals. So for instance, I had no idea you were supposed to remove the abdomen from the tarantula. And believe me, you want to remove the abdomen from the tarantula. I cannot explain the horrors I experienced biting into a big, fat tarantula abdomen. Hey, I figured that's where all the meat was. I was wrong. That was where all the terror was. Think overstuffed jelly donut exploding outwards on your face. Only not delicious jelly at all, just disgusting bug guts jelly. Also, I didn't know you were supposed to singe off the tarantula hairs. Some tarantulas use those fine hairs as defensive weapons. So imagine how wonderful it felt to have a bunch of them get stuck in my throat. All right, mistakes were made, but I battered and fried my tarantulas up following a recipe I found online. This was paired with some nice plum sauce, then lightly salted. You know how I've been talking about sticker shock throughout this episode? Well, nothing compares to the sticker shock of a full-grown tarantula sitting on your plate. Unless it's two full-grown tarantulas sitting on your plate ready for you to chomp down. When the girlfriend saw it, she actually got lightheaded and I thought she was going to faint. She promptly walked out of the kitchen. She couldn't even bear to watch me eat these giant eight-legged freaks. So, how'd they taste? Well, I feel like I have the palate of a potato farmer sometimes because honestly, it was kind of bland to me. Like unseasoned chicken. Unlike most of the other bugs I had this week though, the meat was actually kind of chewy, especially in the legs. I'll admit though, I couldn't do it. Eating dead spiders the size of my palm was just too much. All right, for day snacks throughout the week, I actually got a bunch of insect bars, which is basically what it sounds like. They're sort of like granola bars, but way edgier. Think crickets and mealworms and other unidentifiable creepy crawlies mixed in there. They're mashed up enough that you can't really tell what you're eating. And the addition of vanilla or nuts or chocolate basically masks any insect's taste. Again, another good way to ease yourself into the bug diet. Another surprisingly tasty snack was chocolate-covered scorpions, though sadly they did not have their stingers and were kind of tiny. I was hoping for a scorpion as big as my hand, but though I hear you can get them, they're also pretty expensive. Dinner is my favorite meal of the day, but my first dinner would end in disaster. Now, maybe I still have some of my youthful, childlike wonder in me, but when I thought about insect diet, I immediately thought about worm spaghetti. I mean, honestly, what could go better together? Sadly, you can't get really long worms unless you just buy a case of night crawlers from a bait shop. But even that seemed like too much for me. So I settled on smaller meal worms and basically fried them up with olive oil, some rosemary, and thyme and dumped them into a pot of spaghetti. This was a mistake. The slippery consistency of the spaghetti did not complement the crunchiness of the meal worms in the expected way. It just sort of made me think of big fat night crawlers in my mouth. Or maybe I just had that image already because I was originally thinking about them. Either way, this was the only meal the whole week where I legitimately heaved and almost barfed. The whole thing went into the trash. Absolutely no thank you. I did find a recipe online for a BLT, which immediately sold me because puns are life. 
Turns out you don't actually get adult bees, which I guess makes sense, and instead you get bee larvae when you order a bag of edible bees. Now preparing this was kind of tricky. First, I sauteed the larvae in butter with a few drops of honey. Then I mixed them with egg white and put the whole thing back in the pan to solidify it. Now I had a sort of a bee steak held together by egg white, so I flopped that on top of some lettuce and tomato and boom, my very first BLT ever. The girlfriend was far less delighted at my creation than I was. Honestly, at this point in the week, she was basically queasy and green every single day. How'd it taste? Listen, I knew going in that once this challenge was over, I wasn't going to be turning to an insect diet. Literally, none of these meals were going to make it into my real life meal plans. Bee larvae might have changed my mind. Those chubby little things basically live their whole lives in honey. It's all they eat. So not only are they plump, but when you bite into them, they have this nice sweet taste. It's like candy, but not as sugary or overly sweet. Honestly, it's just right. I love this so much that I actually roasted more of those bad boys up. In honey, of course then dusted them with some sea salt and stuck them in a bag for a fantastic snack. Out of all the bugs I've eaten, these things are definitely staying. Well, that is if I can get the girlfriend to come around to it. She has really suffered through this whole week, to the point that she was non-jokingly thinking about staying with a friend after the third day. She's been nauseated at basically every meal, and we quickly had to start eating apart, which I really didn't like because sitting down to a meal together is one of my favorite things. I told her about the bee larvae and she was not having it. I think she just needs time away from seeing me cooking up all kinds of bugs and worms every day of the week. Maybe in a month or two she'll come around. But you should be buying a bee larvae like yesterday, because trust me, it's pretty much aces. Now go check out Eat Only What I Catch for 72 hours, or click this other video instead.